2022 was a solid performance. Not only did we go to give good financial results, but also we implemented few things which were in the pipeline for us to deliver on. Despite the macro challenges in some of the markets, we grew by around 6.2% on revenue, 9% on EBITDA, and more than 100% on profit. We also got a benefit of one-time gain coming from the merger uh, in Malaysia between Cellcom and DG. Also very strong when it came to the balance sheet, uh, cash flows of around 1.2 billion and cash in hand of around 7.5 billion ringgit. So a fairly well financially positioned company as well as underlying performance. Uh, in addition to that, we continued our journey towards uh, implementing the risk and compliance framework which we had set back in 2020 also looking at sustainability uh, closely in terms of setting up some guidance framework and targets for ourselves on sustainability. That includes the uh, reduction of the carbon emission over 2030 and 2050. So 2022 was actually a very busy year in terms of corporate exercises for us. And they were all linked to our XZR 5.0 strategy, uh, which was essentially consolidation of the markets as well as building new revenue streams, be it in tower, fiber business, etc. So I think we ended up uh, in November end with uh, completing the merger with DG, uh, Cellcom DG merger to create the largest telecom company in uh, Malaysia, uh, well positioned to build on enterprise and uh, fiber uh, business and also uh, investing 250 million over five years on uh, innovation center, which will develop new technologies, artificial intelligence, IoT, etc. We also acquired the second largest fixed line business in uh, Indonesia, which has around 3.1 million home passes, around 800,000 uh, home connects. Uh, and that allows us to build a very strong uh, home broadband position in a very underpenetrated Indonesian market. So there was an enterprise acquisition of 51% we acquired of Hypernet, which is very strong into a solutioning company, which should uh, bolt on to our enterprise ambitions in Indonesia. We also acquired uh, towers in Philippines, around 2,900 towers. Philippines is important because that reduces our exposure on the tower business from uh, frontier markets to more emerging markets uh, footprint. We also got the license uh, from uh, the central bank to uh, roll out our digital bank. We are very pleased to get that uh, uh, license. We are preparing ourselves to launch by the end of this year. So that's a partnership with RHB. We complement the knowledge and experience on both sides. So we have on Boost a good experience of running the channels, the wallet. They have a banking experience. We should create a very strong digital bank to provide services to underserved and underpenetrated customer base in Malaysia.